Hi, today I'm going to show you how to read from a text file using two scanner objects. We're going to start a new class and it's an application class. Let's call it family. Um, it starts and there's our class. Um, I just wanted to start the project so that now I can show you. It's in my NetBeans projects folder. So I've shown you a screenshot here of my NetBeans and please note the project location is shown here when you create a new project. So mine is in my documents under NetBeans projects as you can see over there. So do take a note of that because you're going to need to go there in File Explorer. So in File Explorer you can see that I'm going to save my text file over here under Documents, NetBeans Projects and then the Family folder which is the project I've just created in NetBeans. And this is where I must put my text file. So I'm going to right click and click on New and then Text Document. Just here in the blank space in the folder right click New Text Document Let's call it family data. The .txt ending can stay. And then I'm going to double click on that to open it. And I'm going to start typing in some family data there. Let's just close that and minimize that. Let's type in some data. So I'm going to type in Joseph Ash. And this is my grandpa. I've had a French family. And we will type in his date of birth. So say he was born on the 12th of the 12th, 1930. And then I've got my grandmother, Suzanne, Ash, grandma. That's my relationship with them. And she was born on the 3rd of the 4th, 1932. So I've got data in here. I can carry on adding as many lines of data as I want. Remember that each line must have three pieces of data. The name, then the relationship with me, and then the um, what they are to me, grandpa, grandma, father, whatever it is, and then their date of birth. Every single line must have that. So we'll put file and we'll save it. So that data has now been saved in this text file on my hard drive. And we'll move that to the side here because we'll refer it to it just now. Let's start programming our, um, our program here. I'm going to remove the, the uh, comments. And whenever we read from a file, first we have to open the file for reading. So scanner, SC file, let's put a capital F, file equals new scanner. And then in brackets, new capital file, that's another class, brackets, quote, and the name of the file. You can see there's the name of the file, familydata.txt. Exactly as it is there. Now when I type this in, I get the scanner class and the file class are underlined in red because Java doesn't know where to find them. So I've got to click on the light bulb and add an import for the scanner class. Click on the light bulb again, add an import for the file class. Okay. Once I've done that, another part of the program gets underlined. And that's because when I open a file for reading, there's a possibility that it cannot be found on the hard drive. So I need to surround that statement with a try catch or I could add a throws clause for the file not found ex exception. I would rather you choose surround statement with try catch because more often that is the option that we ask you to do in a test or exam. Uh, the wording would be um, add code so that your program will not crash if the file cannot be found. So when you do an automatic try catch like that, by clicking on the light bulb and adding that, it's got the right catch, file not found ex, but you must remove this logger.getLogger and then type do a system.out.println. So if you see tab, 
and we will just put a file not found. So if that if we hadn't created the file here, the family data.txt, when you ran your program, the catch part of the program would have worked and the file would not have been found. But we've already created it in the right place in the folder structure of the of the project. So it, it will be found when we run this program. Okay. And we can run the program actually, but nothing's gonna happen because all it does at the moment is it opens the file for reading. So it's like you're opening a book, but just sitting there. As long as you don't put your head down, put your eyes on the page, you're not gonna read anything. So now we have to start doing that part. So we will put a while loop in. While sc file dot has next bracket bracket and put your braces in for your while loop. Now what that means is when you open the file for reading using that scanner SC file calls new scanner new file family data.txt there's like a pointer that starts pointing to the top line in the file and we will read this line and then the pointer will point to the next line then read that line and it will move down and down and down till you've read the last line of the file and then the pointer will not be able to point anymore because there are no more left, lines left to read. So as long as there are lines left to read, this part, sc next bracket, bracket, that will be true as long as the pointer is still pointing to one of the five lines. Okay? But when it's finished, when you've read Jacques Brother, 18, 1985, then sc will become false. So how do you read a line of, file, of the text file? You declare a string, call it line equals, you're gonna say sc file dot next line. Bracket, bracket, because it's a method and semicolon. So that, the first time that operates, you will read Joseph Grandpa 12, 12, 19, 30. All of that data will be in this string called line. Then you're gonna have to split it up. We don't want one big chunk of data with all the hashes in that doesn't look very nice if you're going to present it to a user you have to split it up into the name the relationship and the date of birth so we will declare a second scanner class object let's call it sd line this time equals new scanner and in the brackets we put that string we've just read called line that's the line we want to split up and we can say dot use delimiter the delimiter is the thing that splits the data and if you look at your your, your text file you can see it's a hash so that is going to allow us to split up the line into different pieces every time we say sc line dot next we're going to get another bit from the string We'll say string name and say sc line dot next bracket bracket. That's going to give us the name string. Let's say relationship equals sc line dot next, and that will give us the grandpa, grandma, father, mother, brother part from the string. And then we will say string. I will keep it as a string instead of a date object just to keep things simple equals sd line dot next again and we will get the date of birth so we've got the three pieces of data from each line and it would be good now to print it so let's do a print statement we will print the name plus a tab plus the relationship plus a tab plus the date of birth and that will allow us to print all the data in the file once all five lines have been read we will get to this part se file dot has next will become false because we all have read all the lines from the file and then the loop will terminate and that will be the end of the program. 
So we're now going to run our program and see what happens. So if I run it, I get all of the data out. Joseph, can you see there's a tab there? Grandpa and his date of birth. Suzanne, grandma, date of birth. Pierre, father, etc. So all five lines of the file get read using the while loop. We read the lines, then we split each line up into the name, the relationship and the date of birth, and we print it. Remember that it's very important where you put your text file. If you don't put it in the right place, things aren't going to work. The other thing that is important is make sure that you've got three pieces of data on each line. Sometimes you may have an integer there instead of a date of birth. You could put the people's ages, although that doesn't make sense because next year you've got to change it. So um, this, this method really works, but please make sure that you learn this code off by heart. What's going to change each time you'd write an exam or a test is the type of data that is stored in the text file, but you will have to open the file for reading using this line. You will have to do a while loop using this line. You will have to read each line from the text file. And then you will either, we'll learn, teach you another way of splitting the lines up later, but at this stage, you will need a second scanner class object to split the lines up into their parts. And you will have to say seline.next and store it into a string, or you could say .next int if it's an integer, .next double if it's a double, and so on. And at this stage, we're just printing the data. We're not doing anything more advanced with it. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. And um, let me know if you'd like me to teach you any other topics. And please subscribe and like. Thank you.